I was born in Belarus. Most of the time, the, like the stores were empty, like you couldn't buy anything. Like even shoes, you you needed special coupons to buy shoes, so you were only allowed to buy, like for example, like one pair of shoes per year per child, and even that pair of shoes you needed to find it because the stores were empty most of the time. My parents had a, a lot of people had like a farm basically there, like a summer I would say maybe house where my parents grew uh, potatoes, strawberries, apples, just like in a way having a summer house here except you had a dacha there where you grew things and you just like basically shared with your family sometimes like with your relative if they didn't have for example like we if we would get a lot of strawberries especially after Chernobyl we had a lot of like especially strawberries like not just strawberries like in general all the things quadrupled <laughs> they weren't telling people that or oh, Chernobyl happened people were my mother I remember was even telling me that they would like it would rain and like the puddles would be like greenish color but no one knew what that was and even if people would be getting sick and everything the government didn't tell you they only started hearing i think rumors like like three or four days after it happened they were just hearing rumors about it my mother right now has um thyroid which is the case for a lot of russians because of the chernobyl a lot of them developed uh, thyroid because of that like over time and everything which a lot of doctors say it's probably because of radiation and like a lot of people develop cancer a lot of a lot of babies were actually born like if you look closely like if you'll do research more into it there were a lot of children that was born like disabled like without parts missing like weird looking because of chernobyl and i know even a few rel like the different relatives that i have there that developed cancer and everything my parents would tell me don't tell anyone that you're jewish because there were a lot of incidents where people that were Jewish would get robbed, would get uh, slashed, would get like caught, um, beaten up if you're Jewish. We were basically uh, refugees. Uh, there was a particular time in the United States when they opened up, I guess, like a gate for all the Jewish people to leave, so we were considered to be a refugee. Usually people would get a permission when they could leave and they would get like a period of time when they would be able to leave and then you had to get tickets from somewhere. It's like I remember my parents had to think travel to Moscow to get the tickets but they had to sell their apartment which not a lot of people actually even owned the apartment there because it was very hard to financially afford it. I remember my very very first day when I walked out of the airplane and I met my relatives and everything and they handed me a banana. <laughs> And I was like, wow, a banana. <laughs> I was like surprised. I was like, where did they get a banana? <laughs> because there was such a rare case. I remember my father got a case through someone. Like he had to bribe or think someone to get a case of bananas. And you couldn't always even get a bananas. And when, he, and when they gave me a banana to eat because they figured maybe I was hungry or something after the airplane. I was like, wow, a banana. <laughs> At first it was really, really tough for me. I remember meeting this girl actually. I still remember her name, Anya. I don't know what ever happened to her. She actually helped me out a lot. She was like translating things for me. Like she was always showing me around, helping me where things were and everything. So she made it fairly like in a way easy for me. I finished a four year college. I have my uh, bachelor's in finance investments. When I was even in college, we already started thinking of this idea of a business. My husband was actually always very into different businesses. Like he could never sit still. He always like wants to go further in, into like he has one career, but he always says that you need to go further in your pursuing of a career. We always loved, loved coffee teas. I'm like a fanatic when it comes to coffee teas, especially I love good tea. And if you think about it, there's not a lot of places that have a very, very high quality tea. And we used to love going to places like that just to sit down, have a conversation, especially since we were in college, we couldn't afford going to a restaurant. It was just too expensive. So for us, going to like a tea place or a coffee place was something that we were able to afford and something that we loved, we had a passion for it. In this kind of business, you re as an owner, you really need to have a hands-on experience to know how to do things. So basically left where I was working, I went to work in a coffee shop, making cappuccino lattes, espresso, serving people um, to basically understand, like so that I can work more with people, like see what people like um how to do things i was learning to do the art of latte like drawing 
things on the lot sales, which is really nice. I love that. We knew, of course, how much the rent will be per square footage, which is a very pricey rent. Uh, we went into, we spoke to a lot of different architects, we spoke to a lot of different contractors like to build up this place, like see what they tell us, like how much it's going to be. We went to different uh, restaurants, cafes, like basically spoke to owners. They told us, for example, how much is their electrical bill, how much is their water bills, uh, things like that. So we were basically going by like the size of their place, like by the equipment that they use, because it depends a lot on that. Uh, and see like approximately what our bills are gonna be. A lot of people would be telling us, oh, you need to make sure that you have enough money for at least six months. But we found out through this business that six months isn't always a very, like, it's not always enough. Try to go for like a year of having enough just because you never know, like with this neighborhood, we were very surprised because this neighborhood might seem like somewhat <clears throat> busy, but it's more residential. So a lot of people, so, we don't get as many customers as we would want to because usually the people that live in this neighborhood to go out they go to other neighborhoods our location is amazing we are a corner place we're all glass like even when you, it's beautiful here when you sit inside and sometimes like if for example a person is on a date they have nothing to talk about they can always look outside and if they see someone uh like fighting or someone doing something interesting or there's some children playing around and they like would look at it and they'll have a way to start a conversation we have an exceptional tea very very high quality tea the highest tea that the quality that you can find and the way we even serve tea in individual teapots and even our teapots are very interesting it's not a very an ordinary teapot and for people to to know like to know how the teapot looks, they have to come in and they have to see it and they have to experience it. It's the experience, experience in drinking the tea and, and pouring it. And we have very unique teas. We have also teas that open up into a flower. Basically, it looks like a ball and just it blooms into a beautiful flower when you put it into hot water, which is a very interesting experience. Usually, I would say it would be approximately $300,000 taking away those cost of the air conditioner, boilers, a few other things. Like we have to put our own bathrooms. Usually you're already provided with a bathroom. But it also depends on the business. Like if it's a coffee shop, a tea shop, like no food, it's gonna be much less than that. I would say maybe $100,000. There were a lot of costs that we underestimated. And even when building this whole place, there were extra costs that always came up, costs that weren't even the contractor's fault it was in a way sometimes our fault because we would be adding something that we f before didn't see we get about maybe 200 people through the door on a good day on a bad day we might get like 120 people through our door but for a food business it's not enough you need a, a much much more than that to survive especially with having such a high expenses so right now our hope is that we're gonna get a liquor license soon that's our major major hope because alcohol always makes a big difference <laughs> usually when people drink alcohol they usually order more food i uh, do lots of research i would say lots and lots of research if you have a chance go out there work in the field that you're going to be opening the business in because you need to get your basically feet wet you need to feel how it's going to be so go out there work do a lot of research and just remember that it's not easy, that you're gonna have to work very, very hard, but usually if you work very, very hard, usually it pays off at the end.